In this week's uh, update from IHME on the COVID-19 epidemic, uh, at the broad level, at the global level, uh, our forecasts remain very similar to the past. Uh, basically, the huge Omicron wave continues to sweep through the world. We're seeing in some, but I'll come back to it in a moment, uh, but not all, rapid declines after hitting a peak. And we expect that the epidemic will have largely swept through the world now by the end of March, a little bit longer than previously thought because the Omicron wave in China seems to be not yet taking off. And that is such a large population that does affect uh, the, the global epidemic. Within that story, however, there's some interesting patterns that are uh, worth noting and add to the complexity um, of the story. In some countries, Greece is a good example, uh, England is another example, the epidemic has reached a peak, come down, and about halfway down, it's leveled out. And I think the best explanation we can find for this phenomenon is that each place is having the sort of classic peak we see in an island state like Malta or Hawaii uh, or Puerto Rico, where you go straight up and come straight down. But those up and down phenomena are spread spatially throughout each of these countries. And so in aggregate, you tend to see this spike go up, come down, and then a, a flat period. And so we expect eventually uh, those numbers will, will shoot down. But it does mean that at, at the national level, we may see somewhat more protracted epidemics than we expected. The other phenomenon that we're seeing in some countries is that the peak that uh, we're expecting to see in reported cases is much lower than our models would have suggested. We're seeing this in a number of middle income countries in some states in India, some states in Brazil. And we think this is where testing capacity is simply being overwhelmed at the peak of the epidemic. And so that we're getting a sort of a truncated peak uh, we just run out of the ability to detect cases or put in our language, the infection detection rate as the surge comes through is dropping even faster than we expected uh, because of sort of exceeding testing capacity. Proving that is hard, uh, but it is probably the only way we can account for these early peaks that are smaller than expected, given everything that we know about each country in terms of vaccination levels, past exposure to previous variants and the waning of immunity. The third phenomenon that we're seeing in the data, which compl uh, complicates things quite a bit, we've talked about it before, but we're getting you know, clearer and clearer evidence about it, is that countries vary considerably about how they are reporting so-called incidental um, Omicron infections uh, in hospitalized patients and in deaths. And we've dug into the, the details from some jurisdictions, and it's clear that in some jurisdictions, the uh, recommended rules are clearly to count what are called suspect cases, which is anybody who is hospitalized or dies that's tested positive in the last 60 days. Uh, some countries use a different period, 30 days in, in other, other places. And so that's including a lot of people, given how common Omicron is, that are admitted and die from other causes. Now, eventually, they will go back and revise their death numbers as death certificates come in and there is adjudication and investigation, or at least in many places. But for now, we're seeing in some places, and we notice this particularly strongly in some states in the United States, uh, we're seeing this in Spain, we're seeing this in some other countries in Europe. And what it, what it shows up as is that the um, infection fatality rate that we observe by or, or estimate seems unusually high in those settings. And that's where we've looked into the reporting rules. Other places do a better job of not counting the incidental and in hospital admissions and deaths. Um, Denmark is an example of that. And we're not seeing the same rise in deaths that we are in places that do count the incidentals. So it is making the analysis uh, harder. And it's also meaning that it's taking more time to sort of calibrate or try to calibrate these models to each jurisdiction to take into account what we can see in these differences in how data are reported. Now, the last 
consideration that everybody's paying attention to is the BA2 subvariant of Omicron. Uh, that is best documented in its impact in Denmark, where you had a BA1 surge, and then immediately on top of that, a BA2 surge. Uh, now, while we see BA2 spreading in other places, we have yet to observe the same phenomenon of a true secondary surge, but certainly something that we are watching carefully. I think it's very interesting to see what happens in Hauteng province in South Africa, where BA2 is replacing BA1. Uh, there's been a slowdown in the decline in cases, but we have not seen a surge yet uh, of any appreciable size. And likewise, we haven't seen, you know, exponential surges like we saw for BA1 in other uh, jurisdictions that are reporting more BA2. So to be watched carefully. But the big issue there is whether BA2 has more immune escape so that prior infection, uh, more people that were previously infected that didn't get BA1 may now be able to get BA2 and or whether you can get BA2 after having been infected with BA1. Either of those could and would lead to, uh, you know, a longer Omicron surge, which is certainly possible, but there's no indication that BA2 is more severe than BA1. So even if there is a longer surge, we don't expect it to substantive, substantively change the number of deaths that we'll observe um, in, in the coming weeks. It might prolong pressure on hospitals. Our forecasts remain uh, fundamentally the same, that as the Omicron wave sweeps through the world, maybe a bit delayed in, in China, uh, we will come through the Omicron wave sometime in April with um, a large fraction of the world, 50% or more, that have been infected with Omicron with the highest levels of population immunity that we've observed and should have a period Bar a new variant, uh, we should have a, a period of relatively low transmission for uh, weeks or months. And in the Northern Hemisphere, that might well extend through the summer to the fall. Of course, a new variant with immune escape can come along and, and change those basic dynamics. Uh, but in the absence of that, or in appending that uh, emergence of a new variant, we do expect the Omicron wave to be uh, go into essentially a decline starting now and in the coming weeks um, and end up with, um, you know, uh, uh, much lower levels of both hospitalization and death than we've been observing.